Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, January 27, 2012. Our top story is actually a little hard to categorize, so we'll just say it's awesome. Funding from the U.S. government, Google, and others is going to a company called AlterRock Energy, Inc. Now, this project is testing an enhanced geothermal system, which in this case means pumping water into a dormant volcano specifically the Newberry Volcano in Central Oregon. The plan is to pump lots of water into a well near the volcano, generating steam for turbines. Three similar power plants to this are in Europe, but one in Switzerland was shut down due to earthquake complaints. You see, in order to create the underground reservoir needed for this kind of power generation, a process called hydroshearing needs to take place. In conventional hydroshearing, cold water is pumped into deep wells to create fractures in the rock. However, the Newberry project is using a new method. Biodegradable plastic particles are added to the water. This seals off fractures near the surface and promotes more to form deeper, after which the plastic melts away. If all goes well, the hope is for geothermal to become a more accessible power source with the ability to use less accessible geothermal sources. We now turn to the world of physics. Japanese scientists have used computational algorithms to simulate the first instance after the Big Bang with a version of string theory named IIB. String theory attempts to reconcile quantum mechanics and general relativity by describing particles as vibrating strings in multiple dimensions. Not all string theory models can be used to explain the beginning of time as most of the mathematical solutions can occur just at low temperatures, incompatible with the universe's original hot state. If correct, this simulation will be the first to explain why we can only observe three of the nine dimensions at larger scales. All strings started by being symmetric in the nine spatial dimensions, then symmetry was broken due to quantum fluctuations. This allowed only three dimensions to expand outward with time while the other six remain trapped at the scale of the Planck length. The study has naturally found some skepticism, mainly due to the narrow time interval of the simulation. This description of the origin of the universe will become more credible if the study is extended to a longer time scale. Our final story is an update from the world of technology. Collaboration between German and IBM scientists has resulted in the world's smallest magnetic storage unit. 12 iron atoms can store one bit of information, meaning a standard byte of information will only require 96 atoms. This data storage unit is constructed, read, and written on an atomic level using a scanning tunneling microscope. The set of 12 atoms can take on two magnetic states corresponding to the binary 0 and 1. These data units are based on a special kind of magnetism called antiferromagnetism, in which particles within the magnet are aligned opposed to their neighboring particle. This essentially makes the units magnetically neutral at large scales, allowing them to be placed extremely close together. Now, unfortunately, these kinds of systems only function at minus 268 centigrade, but the scientists said there's potential for 200 atom arrays to be stable at room temperature. Ultimately, it'll be some time before we have atomic scale data storage in computers, but in the meantime, it's also an excellent opportunity to research quantum effects using even smaller data units. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.